Number 10. John Quincy Adams served as the sixth president of the United States from 1825 to 1829. His father served as the second president. They were the first and one of only two presidential father-son pairs in United States history, the only other pair being 41st President George Bush and his son, 43rd President George W. Bush. Number 9. Adams was the second president in American history to serve a single term, the first being his father. Both had tried for re-election, but failed. Number 8. In 1824, John Quincy Adams was the victor in one of the most exceptional elections in United States history. In an election between four candidates, Adams beat out William H. Crawford, Henry Clay, and his greatest rival, Andrew Jackson. Jackson won the most electoral votes and the popular vote, but Adams won the most delegates and the House of Representatives ultimately declared him the winner. It is one of the only two elections in which the House of Representatives decided the president and the only election in which the victor didn't receive the most electoral votes. Number 7. Jackson ran against Adams again in 1828, in the first rematch in presidential history. Without Crawford or Clay to split the vote, Jackson won decisively. It has been considered one of the most vicious elections in United States history with many personal attacks. Adams was portrayed by Jackson supporters as an elitist, coming from a privileged background and being involved in sexual scandals. Meanwhile, Adams supporters attacked Jackson for using immoral and out-of-date slave trading practices and painted his wife as an adulteress. Number 6. Adams didn't attend Jackson's inauguration. He also never invited Jackson to the White House prior, and Jackson didn't invite him to the inauguration. This was likely due to the brutal mudslinging during the race. There have been six United States presidents who didn't attend the inauguration of their successor, not including those who died prior to their successors taking office. Adams was the second with this distinction, and his father the first. Number 5. In 1830, the year after he left office, John Quincy Adams was elected to the House of Representatives. He was the first former president to enter back into public life after his time as president and remains the only president to serve in the House after his presidency. Number 4. In 1797, Adams, age 30, married Louisa Catherine Johnson, age 22. The wedding took place in London, Louisa's home city. Louisa was the first foreign-born first lady. The only other would be Melania Trump, wife to 45th President Donald Trump. Number 3. The Mendy Bible was gifted to then-Congressman John Quincy Adams in 1841. In 1839, a group of Mendi people from the African country Sierra Leone were taken captive by a group of Spanish who sought to sell them into slavery. The Mendi revolted and took over the ship, but afterwards the ship was captured by the United States Navy. The captives had an unclear legal status. A well-known opponent of slavery, Adams defended the captives not only as free men, but he even defended their mutiny aboard the Spanish ship. Adams won the case and the Mendy were allowed to return home, but before doing so, they purchased a distinguished Bible for Adams with a letter inside expressing their gratitude. Number 2. After his election to the House of Representatives, Adams would serve in the office all the way until his death. In 1846, he suffered a stroke. Though partially paralyzed, he recovered and returned to office in 1847. The next year, in 1848, he suffered a cerebral hemorrhage while speaking on the House floor and died two days later. His last words were, quote, This is the last of Earth. I am content. Among the many present for his death was 39-year-old Representative Abraham Lincoln. Number 1. Adams is generally regarded as being an average president. He was considered highly intelligent and qualified with an ambitious agenda. In recent decades, he's received praise for being the first president to staunchly oppose slavery. However, in the political arena, he was somewhat weak. In contrast, as diplomat and as Secretary of State, he's been considered among the greatest in United States history. Prior to his presidency, he would serve as minister to Russia, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom, and Prussia. 
He served as Secretary of State for 5th President James Monroe, during which he would help form the Monroe Doctrine, one of the bedrocks of United States foreign policy. It's believed he spoke eight languages, and historians even suspect that he had the highest IQ of any United States president. To support regular uploads from this channel, consider subscribing and donating to Resyndicate it on Patreon. Donations from $1 to $15 a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.